this is a video that is really more for um, I use this more for my math and writing learning communities um, but this video is really about telling the story of a graph or telling the story of math data um, so it's a literacy activity to consider if you ever if you're a person who struggles to when you look at numbers to kind of see the possibilities behind them or, or if they tend to cross or if they just don't have as much meaning as alphabetic text or something like that or a video so this is um, so I'm borrowing an example a, a little bit of data from the linear function section of the MAT 151 curriculum from that professor. So this is one of their slides. So um, they, uh, so in this context, um, we're looking at data about Brandon, Brandon, that side. Um, suppose you're given the following table relating Brandon's weight in pounds to the number of weeks since he began a diet. So it's a guy's weight loss pattern over time. And so this is just this is just raw data right here. So this isn't um, just looking at it. We could do the things they ask us to try and find the rate of change and all of that fun stuff. Um, but what we really want for this is what is Brandon's story behind this data? So let's imagine, and I'm not gonna worry about like drawing a graph or anything, but let's imagine we were plotting this over time, right? So we've got the number of weeks that he's dieting, and then we've got his weight in pounds. And so from start to finish, he's doing this for about 12 weeks, um, and his, his weight fluctuates. So let's just pretend, because we can, that, that week zero is February 1st. Um, so if we're trying to tell the story of these numbers and kind of help them make sense, um, let's do this. If February 1st is starting date, then we see that two weeks in to this process of dieting, he's lost nine pounds. That's substantial, four and a half pounds a week. Now, it's interesting in context, if we start with February 1st, what happens two weeks into February? Valentine's Day. So if we're, if you're a college student, like most of my students are, or if this is just fun to think about this way, that's not an uncommon reason that someone might want to lose some weight. I've got a, I've got a big date set up for Valentine's Day. Uh, Valentine's Day, I want it to be special. I want to look my best, whatever it is. Um, and, and that can mean a lot of different things. We're not going to go into body and all that stuff right now. We're just saying, here's a possible context. There's a dude named Brandon, and he wants to lose weight. He loses nine pounds in two weeks, which just so happens to correlate with his Valentine's Day extravaganza, right? So serious. So maybe, so he goes on Valentine's Day. Now we look further. Five weeks after Valentine's, you know, seven weeks into this dieting process, he's actually gained weight back. So he had lost nine pounds to, in two weeks. And then over five, week, five weeks, he gains the weight back. So what's happening here? What are some possibilities? So usually in class, I've got kind of two ways that people go. First, they say, the date went badly. So he started like laying off the diet, not trying so hard, and he gained some of the weight back. Or the date went really well is the alternative story. And maybe he realized this person actually cares about me. They don't care about just physical appearance or anything like that. And so then the, over the next five weeks, he starts focusing on his character and building the relationship and just enjoying spending time with that significant other. Hooray, right? So those three pounds gained isn't necessarily connected to anything negative. Um, so that's either of those might be possibilities. Um, then for the last five weeks, if you're a college student, 12 weeks after February 1st is pretty close to the end of the semester. So what do we see? The last five weeks of the semester, roughly, he's lost six more pounds. So um, one thing that makes sense, that might make sense is he's, all of his classes started having all the projects due near the end. Maybe his work is now wanting him to work a couple more hours. He's got this relationship and he's just so busy and um, kind of a little bit stressed that he's not making time for, for meals. So he's skipping meals and that's maybe contributing to him losing six pounds. That's one option. The, between the stress of the semester and deadlines and uh, lack of time because he's just so busy, he loses six pounds. That's a possible reason for that data point. And, or alternatively, as one person said in class this week, maybe he's just getting prepped and working on his summer bod. That's possible too. Um, maybe, the, maybe February, maybe Valentine's Day didn't go well and he kind of went into a state where he's like, 
he stopped caring about dieting for a while. He lost his motivation. He started eating marshmallows late at night for fun, like I do. Um, <laughs> and, and then he kind of snapped out of it um, mid-April and is like, I'm going to be ready for summer. And, um, and he decides to uh, really kick it into gear and try to get lose some of those extra pounds to fit into his bikini or whatever. That's awkward. But, um, but yeah, so that's, maybe that's Brandon's story. I don't know. And I can't say that this is going to make someone better at math, but what I can say is using a strategy like this, thinking about the story behind the data or the story behind a graph, graph or table or something like that, it may not make you directly better at math, but it makes the numbers in the math more meaningful, which will make you better at math. So, you know, core, it, it, it's something to think about. Um, and this is a, this kind of process, this taking numbers and personalizing them, um, is something that is extremely meaningful for a variety of majors, for a variety of disciplines and professions. Um, the easiest one is with journalism, where they'll go and they'll find some hard-hitting data, something, something, some trend that's happening nationwide or or in a local community, and then what will they do? They'll say, this is happening for thousands of people, but let's focus on Susan right now. Susan's dealing with blah, 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 blah. And we get to hear Susan's story. So journalism is really um, commonly associated with this type of process. They'll give you numbers, but then they'll give you a face to connect to the whatever's going on there, right? Um, so that's not uncommon. It, but this kind of story making of the data is also beneficial if you're pre-med or pre-nursing. Um, when you start working with patients and seeing that, like, their cholesterol, their heart rate, um, their oxygen levels, all of those are just data points. But if you know kind of what's happening in their lives, those data points increase in meaning and you learn the story behind what's going on. So, um, and there are plenty of other places where this might, you might be able to put a story to it. Like for, lately I've been digging into uh, thinking about used cars and looking at them and working on them and stuff like that. And so if you look over, if someone's got like all the maintenance records for a used car that has 200,000 miles and you look over it and you know what you're looking for, that data tells you a story. You can see that they're regular on their oil changes, or you can go and look and see like, oh, they had this changed out of sequence and something must have happened there. And it becomes something that stands out to you the more comfortable you are thinking about the story behind the numbers. So all that to say, this has been a video to, to help you consider um, kind of the, the way we read tables, the way we read data. And you don't have to always have the exact story, to make, but you may be able to create some sort of story that makes the numbers and the data more meaningful. But it may also help you see trends differently because you start to see the humans um, and the other actors on the other side of the data. It's not just raw numbers anymore. It affects people's daily lives and decisions. So hopefully this was fun. Enjoy. Go and um, find data somewhere and try and make a story out of it because it's always fun to do that.